All right, hello everybody. My name is Ryan Grabner. I'm with the Serial Extension Program. I really wish we could be here with you in person for field tours this day, but I'm hoping that this online format will suffice for the year. So starting out today, we're going to look at a few of the recently released wheat varieties that I'm really optimistic about and that I'm hope I think will take some acreage in Oregon in the next few years. We're gonna hold off on the full variety by variety walkthrough until after we start to get 2020 results in, but still with plenty of time before you need to make your fall planting decisions. Next, we'll take a look at some of our online resources and then look through a new variety trial format that I'm really excited about and that I'm hoping we're gonna start using this summer. All right, up first, we've got Appleby CL Plus. This is an OSU variety that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, it's performed very well in the low rainfall areas uh, Yield-wise, it's been on par or a little bit better than where UI Magic has been. Uh, the thing that this has that Magic does not have is dry press resistance. We haven't tested Appleby in a heavy dry press year, but what we've seen so far, we think this is probably going to fall somewhere in the good to great range. Uh, it's down, but the thing to watch out for this are sea stripe and strawbreaker foot rot. It uh, doesn't do a great job fighting these diseases. So if you have fields where you've had issues with those diseases in the past, Apple B CL Plus might be one to steer away from. Up next is Stingray CL Plus. This is a really interesting one because it's late maturing like a lot of the WSU varieties. And typically that means that they aren't as adapted to Oregon. Where the late maturing varieties really seem to have a hard time is the later years or the years where things dry out early. And we haven't had one of those since Stingray CL Plus has been in the trial. We've been coming out of a few relatively good years agronomically. That being said, it's still performed extremely well in variety trials around the state, especially in the irrigated areas around Hermiston. And this could definitely be something to look at some more production of an organ if we continue to see it perform as well as it has. Up next is LCS Shine. This is a Bobtail by Beyond Core Cross from Lima Grain. Uh, both of those varieties typically perform best in higher rainfall areas, especially the Willamette Valley. LCS Shine really seems to do best in the dryland areas, although it has had very good performance around the state. Uh, only weaknesses on this, the test weight's a little bit lower, and then it has some issues with Fusarium crown rot and strawbreaker foot rot. Septoria a little bit on the weaker side, but we don't really have many varieties with good resistance to Septoria. Overall, LCS Shine has been one that, since it's been part of the OSU variety trials for over the last three years, has repeatedly come in at the very top in terms of yield. I think this is going to have a very, be a very good option for a lot of the non-clear field growers. All right, LCS Ghost is another interesting one. It's in the same cohort as LCS Shine. This is actually an Art Deco cross, and I know that a lot of people have had experience with Art Deco. Uh, like Art Deco, this one really has a lot of yield potential, and it's usually right up there with LCS Shine when, at the top of the variety of trials in terms of yield. This does have a little bit of winter tenderness like Art Deco, and we haven't ever seen that in the variety trials yet, but it's something to watch out for. Test weight's a little bit lower. Uh, also like Art Deco, it's got not the best of disease packages. Uh, Strike Plus, it's average. It's an improvement over Art Deco and a lot of the old varieties, but still not up with what we'd like to see with L where LCS Shine is, Applebee, and Stingray. And then a few of the other pathogens, sea strike, Fusarium crown rot, Septoria, uh, doesn't do as good as what we would like to see for a new variety. Still, the yield potential on LCS Ghost is incredible. Uh, if you are able to deal with a few of these downsides, I think that LCS Ghost may have an op or may be an interesting variety to grow in a lot of different parts of the state. All right, so as I said before, we're gonna go on to a lot more depth on varieties later this summer after the OSU variety trial results are in. And the hope for that is once we do have the extra data, I think we're gonna know a lot more about some of the newer releases. All right, and that gets you to our main program page. Uh, here we've got variety trial 
results going back several years, in addition to some information on OSU varieties provided by the OSU Wheat Breeding Program, as well as some serial extension resources. If you click on the 2019 data, it'll get you to the list of variety trial reports from the last year. On the top we have the O-Wheat reports, which is for soft white winters that are not clear fields. So if you scroll down a little bit, then you'd see the hard winter trial, the clear field winter trial, and then also the spring wheat and barley variety trials. So if we click on the uh, 2020 format, and for this we'll look at the trial that we have at Chris Caseberg's farm near Morrow. Here's our variety trial report again from our site on Chris Caseberg's farm near the town of Morrow. And you'll notice some formatting changes, but the big change we actually made is over on the right with this best estimate of the yield. And this is a bit of statistics that uses a mixed model to take all the information that's available to us, or in this case up to five years of data, to try to determine where varieties would fit relative to each other. And this site actually is really nice for demonstrating the utility of the mixed model. Where if you look at, over at LCS Drive, it actually had a fairly mediocre year in 2019, where it yield ranked 17 out of about 40 inter, or for yield. And this placed it lower than Pritchett and Dynagro Impact. However, the best estimate actually gave it a higher score than those other two varieties which seems counterintuitive at first, but to explain this, we look at the two and three year data, where when you get to the three year yield data, even with that mediocre year in 2019, it still ranks fourth in, out of the whole trial. And if we were to zoom out to the four and five year data, we'd see a similar trend. So what this model is doing is it's saying, yeah, LCS Drive had a rough year in 2019, but considering its streak of four good years before that, we still expect that it would come out ahead of Pritchett and Dynagro Impact if you had to choose between the three varieties. This is still a work in progress. I am very open to any suggestions and like I say, all the data that we had before is still going to be available on this report. The biggest change is just going to be the uh, addition of this new statistic and then also now we're going to be sorting by the new statistic. Uh, but please get in touch with me if you have any questions. There's a lot of people I'd like to thank. First, of course, Daisy Rudimetkin and Matthew Hunt, who are the two faculty research assistants in the lab and who are very instrumental in terms of getting this data out to you in a timely manner. I'd also like to thank the Oregon Wheat Commission, which funds this work, as well as all the farmers who allow us to have on-farm trials, which really gives us the range that we need to understand how these varieties are going to perform. Again, if you have questions about anything I said here today or anything else, please feel free to contact me. My phone number is 541-359-7151. And I hope I get to see you guys in the field next year. Have a great season.